Welcome to St. Stephen's Chapel's Bible Study Podcast with your host, Pastor Manny Alaniz. Join us as we spend a few minutes going through the entire Bible verse by verse. For more information and to support us financially, visit our website at stephenschapel.org. That's Saint, S-A-I-N-T, Stevens, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S, chapel.org. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to St. Stephen's Chapel's Bible Study Podcast. Remember, we are calling these studies five-minute Bible studies because they are a quick excursion into God's Word. We begin by reading the passage and then doing an exegetical study of the text. It is our intent to spend from five to no more than ten minutes on these studies Therefore, do not hesitate to listen to these studies more than once and to share them with others, including placing them on your social media. Do you have five to ten minutes to give to the Lord? Of course you do. So now let us join together in the presence of His glory in prayer. Gracious Father, as we turn to Your Word, may Your Holy Spirit come upon us Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living in Christ, we pray. Amen. Hear ye now the word of the Lord, found in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Now there was a man of Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I have said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. This is God's divine word. Last time we started looking at how Jesus knows the hearts and minds of people and how he knows whether or not our faith in him is real or fake. Scripture reveals that in order for our faith to be real, in order for us to be truly saved, we must be born anew. That is, born again, born of the spirit of regeneration. What does this mean? And how do we know if we have been born again? Well, that's the subject of our passage today. Jesus himself tells us how we are saved through rebirth. Like with Nicodemus, Jesus will dig into our uncultivated hearts to sow the seed of the doctrine of regeneration. As we look into our passage, we are introduced in verse 1 to a man of Pharisees named Nicodemus. This tells us that Nicodemus is a religious and studied man who knows Holy Scripture. For Nicodemus, that would mean that he essentially knows the Hebrew Bible by heart, what we refer to as the Old Testament, as a Pharisee. Nicodemus observes the rigorous orthodoxy of the Jewish religion, Judaism. Nicodemus is also a ruler of the Jews. This means that he is a member of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is the highest court of justice, the supreme council of the Jews. Nicodemus is a man of high stature and high status. It should be noted that members of the Sanhedrin are generally presented as being antagonistic and adversarial toward Jesus. What we have here is a confrontation between Jesus and Judaism. But wait, 
Nicodemus doesn't appear to be coming to visit Jesus with hostile intentions. For in verse 2, we're told that Nicodemus has come to Jesus by night. It is as though Nicodemus is trying to have a clandestine, a secret meeting with Jesus so that his peers and the other members of the Sanhedrin will not know. Ah, perhaps Nicodemus' pridefulness is hindering him with shame of how his reputation could be ruined by visiting this unknown, untrained, itinerant, holy preacher named Jesus. It should also be known that the use of the word night, that Nicodemus came by night, has somewhat of a negative connotation. For example, later in this gospel, Chapter 9, verse 4, Jesus tells the people to work by the day, for the night is coming when no one can work. And then later on in chapter 11, verse 10, Jesus says that those who walk in the night stumble because they have no light. And then again in chapter 13, verse 30, we are told that Judas, who betrays Jesus, goes off into the night. Let us not overlook the symbolism of the words used by the writer of this gospel. Nicodemus comes from the darkness of the night, the darkness that is within his soul into the light of Christ. Yes, for Nicodemus, there is something about Jesus that has dazzled his eyes. The miracles that Jesus has performed has captured his attention. This is what we spoke about in our last lesson, how the people saw the miraculous signs, the miracles, and said that they believed in Jesus. But Jesus knew their hearts. Their faith in Jesus was not real. That's why Jesus did not entrust himself to them. And that's what's going on here with Nicodemus. Jesus knows his heart. Oh, isn't that the way it is with so many of us? We have so many obstacles that get in our way. And although Jesus may dazzle our eyes, we have so many excuses as to why we will not turn and face him. Some of us may be so intrigued like Nicodemus was by the calling of Christ, that we might be bold enough to come to Jesus by night in a secret way so that no one else will see us, as did Nicodemus. Why do we do this? Well, in our pridefulness, we think to ourselves, hey, somebody may think that I am weak if I come to Christ, or maybe that I don't have it all together. The reality is our souls are engulfed in darkness and are keeping us from considering the very possibility of turning to the light of Christ for salvation's sake. That's right. We in ourselves cannot turn to Christ to be saved. Now are we getting a clearer picture, a better understanding as to why God, the Holy Spirit, must come upon us in rebirth. Yes, the Lord must sprinkle clean water on us and we will be clean. God must remove our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Listen, we are just setting the table for the confrontation between Nicodemus as he faces the Son of God, who is about to turn his world upside down. Nicodemus, like us, is a lost soul. His mind is full of the thorns and thickles of a fallen and cursed world. Jesus is about to speak the words of heaven to him. Are you ready to listen? Or will your thorny lost souls choke the seed of the gospel message that the Lord wants to sow into your hearts. We'll pick it up next time. Until then, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. Amen. You've been listening to Manny Alanis, pastor at St. Stephen's Chapel. For more information and to support us financially, visit our website at ststephenschapel.org. That's Saint, S-A-I-N-T, Stevens, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S, chapel.org. Now from Manny and the entire St. Stephen's Chapel family, thank you for your prayers. And join us next time as we seek to glorify God verse by verse.